Hello everyone, my name is Bailey Yoder. I'm the Curator of Football Heritage for the Paul Brown Museum at the Maslin Museum. We opened in October of 2018. In February, we opened three new exhibits, the Paul Brown and Maslin Tigers History Timeline, Paul Brown's Pro Teams, a history of the Bengals and the Browns, and Maslin's Gridirons. On March 14th, we also debuted the new Paul Brown Research Library in memory of Bob Shiring. We are really excited to have this here because we now have the Junie and Dolores Studer Library collection here on site. The Maslin Tiger Football Booster Club has been continuing the legacy of Junie and Dolores Studer with bringing information from every new season and every new player that comes through the program. Today, I'm going to be talking about the Maslin Tiger Swing Band. The first Maslin High School band was founded in 1914 at the opening of the new Maslin Washington High School. The band, which was featured in the 1915 annual, is quoted as being a favorite of the football games. There are about 15 members on this band, and nobody really knows why they decided to go out during halftime, but they decided to go out and have fun and kind of bring a little bit more performance to the football games. From 1915 to 1925, the Maslin High Band really didn't have a director because it wasn't a formally organized band. It was one of more of a student organization. Um, so you had a student president, Tom Roseman, from 1914 to 15. From 1915 to 1918, the high school didn't have a band director identified, but in 1919, uh, the manager and director of the band was a man named E.C. Powell. In 1920, again, they didn't have a director identified in the annuals. Um, in 1921, Robert Wyrick was then the director. He was um, a student at the time for the band. The following year, you have John C. Tannehill, who was the uh, math teacher and director of the band from 1921 to 1923. And then you have the principal, Clifton M. Layton, who was the director from 1924 to 1925. In 1926, the high school hired Clem Morrison as their first official band director. He directed the students in a Sousa military style, stemming from John Philip Sousa, which most high school bands are today. It's a very militaristic style and very straight lines marching style. This is where you get Tiger Rag and the Maslin Boys fall in line. During this time period, you start to see the evolution of the black military style uniforms, as well as performing at halftime shows, they start to introduce your drum majors and your flag bearers. In 1937, for just one year, John Justice leads the band, and then in 1938, we see the arrival of George Redbird. George Redbird was a director from southeastern Ohio who had experience in vaudeville, burlesque, and social club stage band circuits, as well as an education background from The Ohio State University. George Redbird's arrival at Washington High School was really interesting because he was brought on by head coach Paul Brown at the time. Not only did he want to entertain the fans during the football game, but he felt that that dead period at halftime, you needed a little more um, energy um, brought to the field. Um, he looked at all of the different music that was playing on the radio during the day and he adapted them to his band. Um, he still used the Sousa military style, but at the same time he um, brought swing into it because that was a very new style of music and everybody was listening to swing in the late 30s and early 40s. And so with this music he adapted the marching style of the band members into what we t uh, traditionally see on the field today with the swing. The Maslin Tiger Swing Band has had over 80 years of this tradition brought on by Bird, and they have been doing the same half beginning halftime performance, um, which includes Carry On and Tiger Rag. Obi was an idea from Paul Brown after he had attended a University of Pennsylvania football game and saw their student mascot wearing a real panther skin. He decided he was going to bring that to the Maslin School Board, and for $500, the Maslin Washington High School had their first OB mascot, which was a real tiger skin from Colorado. The first two students to wear the mascot were Harry Burkhart and Pep Paulson. Harry, unfortunately, uh, was too large for the mascot, and Pep, who was a little bit smaller, was able to fit and became the first official mascot for the Maslin Tiger Swing Band and Washington High School. Over the years, new tiger suits were bought to replace the old ones, and within the last few years, they became harder and harder to find. 
Last year, the Tiger Swing Band moms put together and they were able to raise enough money to buy a new suit, which are the same costumes that are used by the Lion King on Broadway. By 1938, with the introduction of majorettes, you have six women on the field performing spectacular baton routines alongside their drum majors who have been trained by former Ohio State drum majors. One of the majorettes, Anne Anania, who was with the swing band from 1939 to 1941, designed two of the costumes that George Byrd ended up using for his majorettes, a red, white, and blue costume and a South Rampart Street Parade costume. The South Rampart Street Parade costume was extremely progressive for its time. It was a short skirt over top of a leotard and combined with a top hat made for an extremely showy costume. Bird told Anne that when they were to walk by St. George's, which was the church that she attended, to wave to them, which was something that they were not supposed to do when they were performing in a parade, to make sure that her priests approved of the costume. Once they waved back, smiled, and said hello to Anne, they all knew that the costumes were approved by the rest of everybody in the city. Another trick that the majorettes used to do early on was get to the end of the field and toss their baton over the field goal and catch it. During one practice, Anne, who had thrown her baton over the goalpost, did not catch her baton. Instead, the top ball of her baton landed right on her head, knocking her out. When she awoke, she saw George Bird standing over top of her looked around and said, we are never performing that again. In 1941, the Maslin Tiger Swing Band was invited down to the Ohio State University to perform at halftime during the Buckeyes and the University of Wisconsin's football game. The Maslin Tiger Swing Band was invited to perform in place of the University of Wisconsin's band as they could not bring their band down from Madison. This was also a Maslin reunion of sorts as Harry Stoldrayer was the coach for Wisconsin, Paul Brown was the head coach of the Buckeyes, and you have the Maslin Tiger Swing Band being the first and probably only high school band to ever perform at the halftime of a collegiate football game. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We hope that you come and visit us once we reopen, and don't forget to tune in tomorrow for Canton Museum of Art at noon.